video we are going to look at how we calculate the compression and expansion processes in a gas turbine. So if we start from the compression efficiency in the compressor, we're talking about something called polytropic compression efficiency and that is defined as the ratio of the differentially small DHS of a isentropic ideal lossless compression process over some very small differentially small pressure difference of dp. The ratio of that divided by the actual dh, so how much of our actual enthalpy increase is going to be when we compress the fluid. So because of the losses, the enthalpy difference is going to be greater, we have to waste more energy into getting the uh, desired pressure increase. So this sounds like its basic idea is very very similar to the isentropic efficiencies that we talked about with the steam power plant and it is similar but it's not the same. So isentropic and polytropic compression and efficiency and compression and expansion efficiencies are not the same. They are defined with a similar idea but the fact that we are dealing with differences small increase here and as we go further right in the HS or TS diagrams our isobars will diverge from each other so there's going to be a bigger enthalpy difference over at the right hand high entropy edge than here at the left side. So that that is the phenomenon that uh, makes the values of the two different. Now if we look at the compressor so we are taking air from the atmosphere we compress the higher higher pressure then how do we calculate the end point using this polytropic compression efficiency and unlike with the steam power plant we again don't use any kind of uh, edges diagram instead we can calculate the end state with one go using this equation here polytropic compression uh, equation so basically we've got the ratio of temperatures out to temperature in we've got the ratio that, that immediately tells us that we have to deal with uh, the absolute temperatures in Kelvin here you cannot put the uh, Celsius here that will that will be wrong and the ratio of temperature is going to be the pressure ratio of or the pi of the compressor raised to the power of uh, some figures here so there is r then there is our efficiency and the specific heat and from this we can solve the outlet temperature so we multiply with t1 and we get that outlet temperature is t1 times pi to the power of these uh, figures in the exponent now what are the values there r is the specific gas constant so we can define it either as a ratio of uh, the universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight of our gas and it's also uh, the difference between the specific heats of uh, constant pressure and constant volume process. Why this holds is not our concern in power plant engineering courses, thermodynamic stuff. Actually we don't even have to consider either of these definitions. Basically what we need to know is that for air the specific gas constant is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And in case of gas turbine, remember that our excess air ratio has to be very high, 3, 4, 5. So even our exhaust gas is going to be mostly just air. So we can use the same value also for the flue gas. Remember that this is only for the gas turbine. So boiler flue gas, if you ever have to calculate something and using the specific gas constant. Its magnitude is not going to be badly off from here but enough that uh, this this value doesn't hold anymore but for gas turbines it holds. So now as we said this definition of the polytropic efficiency sounds awfully similar to isentropic so how much
actually differ. And we can figure that out with an example. So if we take the compressor that's taking air at 300 Kelvin, uh, compression, of, uh, compression efficiency is 0.88, and our pressure ratio is 15.41. Now, if we assume that our specific uh, heat of the air is going to be 1.04 joules per kilogram Kelvin, so for air, specific heat is also always very, very close to 1, and the lower the temperature, the closer to 1 Cp gets for air. And we can assume reference temperature of 0 Celsius just for calculation convenience here. We're only calculating this one component, so no problem is going to be here. And what this means is then that the, the enthalpy at the inlet condition at 300 Kelvin, that means 27 Celsius, so 28 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, what that means is that our isentropic, so if we are calculating the isentropic efficiency of this compressor, it's going to be the ratio of the total isentropic compression delta H divided by the delta H of our actual compression. How much different this is going to be from the uh, for what is the same for a differentially small ratio? So temperature at the end of the isentropic compression is going to be 300 times pressure ratio to the power of these figures that we just covered. And now because isentropic, so it means our efficiency is one. We get 638 Kelvin, all right? The real compression, we have to put our real compression efficiency and we get, as expected, a little bit higher, higher temperature. And then we apply this basic equa equation to get the enthalpies get 380 and 400 sum. So if we draw, it looks like this. So it means that as we are getting higher and higher, the ratio of this small enthalpy differences to the bigger one is going to be different as we are always for any kind of very, very small pressure difference along this compression process. So basically, the sum of these vertical bits to which we compare all the way our process, it's going to be a bunch of small differences here, further right from our single isentropic efficiency comparison delta H S. So that is the reason that the, our sum of actual compression delta H is, is going to be the same as the delta H of the isentropic compression efficiency, but we are comparing it to a different sum, the sum that is different from this single process straight up from the starting point. And that means that we are getting different figures, how much different if we plug in the numbers here, delta S and delta HS, we get 0.858 as opposed to the 0.88 of the polytropic. So this hopefully clarifies why these are not the same thing also, although at first sight, it might seem like it is very, very similar. Now, if we talk about expansion, then same idea, polytropic, polytropic expansion efficiency, differentially small, uh, pressure decrease and the related actual and ideal dHs. Same kind of equation. The only difference here is that now our efficiency jumped from here to the top in the exponent. So that's the only thing to remember. And now this polytropic Compression and expansion equations. These are pretty much the only equations that you will be expected to remember by heart in the exam. Otherwise, basically, if you remember the definition of a term, you can, from knowing the definition, write down all the equations that you're going to need. But this is something that you 
most of you probably are not familiar enough with thermodynamics that you can just write down the equation from thermodynamic principles. So this needs to be remembered by heart. And now one thing that comes out from this, okay, in the example that we had, we had a given value of specific heat. But specific heat is a function of temperature. So what that means is that we have to start by taking an initial guess, either for the temperature or for the CP itself. And with that, we can calculate one estimate for the outlet temperature, either compression or expansion. Once we have an estimated value for the, or the first calculated round result for the outlet temperature, then we can, use, we can use that and the inlet temperature to calculate a better estimate for the average temperature. And that way we iterate until we get convergence and luckily this iteration is very, very fast. So as long as your first guess wasn't completely off, it's very often done in just two rounds, third at the very most. And it doesn't really, it's an approximation anyway. So basically you can either calculate first the inlet and outlet temperature, take an average temperature, take the CP there, or you can read the temp, uh, CP at the inlet temperature and then CP at the outlet temperature and take the average of the two CPs. Either way, it's pretty much equally good approximation. So either one is as acceptable as the other. 